Well, this is um, part five. Okay, <clears throat> I'm done making something with copper. Absolutely through with it. Making something with copper, part five, the fin, the end. I will never put you through this again. I found some really cool stuff. Remember in the store today, number one, it's just hammerhead. I'm getting ready to knock the wood out of it and drop it in a vapor rust. And number two, let me bring this in here under some better light. I would say an almost full can of Hercules. Dark pipe threading cutting oil with sulfur base for machine threading. Hercules Chemical Company New and C. Incorporated, Canal Street, New York, New York. And we got the guy holding the holding the lightning bolts. That's a one gallon can. And there's great great words uh, on the side here. The, the marketing people. They had so little to say about and they put the same the same message on both sides of the can. But um yeah, I thought that was a I thought that was pretty cool find. And uh let's power this thing back up. Oh there's one more thing I made of copper. And at one time, this baby was shining like a new penny. And I made a copper cube on the mini lathe. You can tell that shine is still potentially there. I initialed it and dated it, I think. Yeah. You know, that thing is like a, has the capability of being like a mirror. And you know, that was done out of round stock on the mini lane. And there we are, pumping away. Like I said, this is just an operation in learning turning. Um, not going to easily come up with anything with this material.
take this opportunity to do a little comparison of my two chucks. Obviously we got a four jaw and a three jaw. So I'm going to use my uh, Berkeley Catch More Fish scale and see what the weight difference is here. Obviously one of them is a four inch and one is three inch. And to the top of the, it's four inches to the top of the jaws there. And two and three quarter of the top of the jaws there. So let's power this thing on. Okay, there's zero pounds, zero ounces. And that's three pounds, one ounce. Three pounds, one ounce. And I can't see if you can see it or not. It's eight pounds, four, five, six ounces. So there's a five pound difference. Now, what that five pound difference is uh, doing to these bearings, I have no idea. But there is a um, upgrade kit because um, these are just straight bob bearings, as I understand it, and that's not really ideal. I think angular roll bearings. I'm not sure what the what the proper ones are called, but uh, LMS sells replacement bearings as well as a little spacer that goes on the end of the spindle on the left here to uh, make up for the difference in thickness uh, between the bearings so um, I would like to I would like to do that as an upgrade I would also like to get the 16 inch bed extension and what that would look like just roughly speaking they said the 7x10 benefits the most from that because this really isn't it should be a six and a quarter by ten. So, <sighs> well, the, the way I saw it, I can't exactly remember how I came up with it, but it basically bring my. Uh, lathe bed well let's just do this let's add six inches 
I would basically bring my lathe bed out to that bottle of Pepsi, which is freaking gigantic. So between the extension and the new bearings, this would be quite a little toy. I mean, that's the problem. Okay. Uh, what we really want is a... Well, I've even seen some benchtop lathes that would... that would uh, meet my needs. My number one... Uh, the number one option I'd like to see it have is the uh, a powered cross feed and uh, in a gearbox so I don't have to switch gears to cut threads. So a conventional standalone lathe, I'm thinking uh, you know, 10, 12, 13 inch uh, swing. Oh, maybe up to 36. Yeah, that would be ideal. And as far as a milling machine, I think I... I think a, a bench top, actually. But uh, something like a thousand watt something PM Matthews maybe or maybe LMS um, yeah I think I'd be quite happy with, uh, with those two upgrades so everybody's probably curious as to what I made out of copper in this five or six part video so I might as well reveal that to you now <laughs> every time I sit down I, I want to do some kind of Dave M imitation you know? <laughs> I get a kick out of Dave M he has the whip so what I've determined that we have here is it's, it could almost be a mortise and pistol but it's just a little holder for my locker my persuader which is copper <laughs> i need to get some round stock um i need to get some more brass round stock and I need to get some more well actually I have quite a bit of a 12L14 in uh, I think the one inch category um, something that I don't think I've shown recently is this MT2 machinable 2 holder, maybe, I don't know. Um, you can buy these things, blanks. You uh, machine them what you want on the end there. I chose to uh, do a spotting drill. And I have another one up here with a, uh, which would be a medium sized chuck for for my machine and this would be would be my small chuck it's chuck it's chuck key comes in a little thing like that
Oh, the, the hazards of working one-handed. And, uh, yeah, those are, uh, I thought I had one more. Let me see, I'm holding one. There's number two. And I have a third one here somewhere. Well, I can't think what it might be. Let me look in the drawer. Okay, while well, I was in the drawer, here's some type of arbor. You guys see that disaster just about happen? Get a kickstand on that. So it's keyed down here. It's almost like it can go on two different shafts. It also has grooves for um, locking clips, I guess. There would be three there. There would be one, there would be two, there would be three. Somebody with the initial R was uh, keen on making sure everybody knew that was his. So if anybody can identify that for real, that would be cool. I do appreciate the feedback I got on on this baby. It is a, uh, I'll have to go back in my notes and see. Some kind of hydraulic valve, maybe. Um, man, I, I got stuff laying out here all over the place. Um, I think that means this video is over. Um, One other item that didn't make the shop made tools was this tool mounted uh, indicator. I did make this tool holder, I guess, but I, um, I cut the dovetail a little bit too deep in order for this to be effective. I, um, I had super glued a, uh, a piece of brass in there. I'm not sure what happened to the original piece that I super glued in there. But this one would probably do the trick too. The idea is, as you mount that, you know, right here obviously, and then you do all your turning right here on the same axis as the indicator. Need to get me a couple new ones though. Because this one is very jumpy. I have a metric uh, test indicating dial I guess it's called. It is a bootleg Michitoya, and the way you can tell it's a bootleg is <clears throat> there's a little square symbol they're using these days that you scan. It's kind of, it's not a barcode exactly. But you guys probably kind of know what I'm talking about. And that should, there should be one of those on the face of this. How do they get things to focus on these cameras? Everybody puts their hand up there. But, you know, that's really not appropriate for dialing anything in. Okay. It's just about time.
turn on the night light. And with that, we'll say good night.